Welcome. In this video, we're going to review what we've learned so far in this module. Uh, so we're going to start off with some vocabulary. Uh, we've talked a lot about domain, and domain goes with our x values. It's all of our possible x values. Um, it also, the x values are the independent variable. Um, other things that, that goes with, so we have our x values, our independent variables, that's the first coordinate. And our inputs. Okay, these aren't in any particular order. This is just all vocabulary that you should know is related to each other. So the domain is all of your possible inputs. They're the first coordinates if we're looking at ordered pairs. It's your independent variable which are your x values. So all of those go together. They're all things that are related to the domain. Whereas the range is all of your y values or the dependent variable. Uh, it's the second coordinate. And our outputs of a function. So all of those vocabulary terms are things that you need to know um, and know that they're related to each other. So uh, other things we should know, this notation here can be read as f of x or a function of x. And that's just telling us we have this function, its name is f, and we put x's into it. So it could also be g of x, h of x, k of x. So in an ordered pair, f of x is the y value. It's our output, and x is the x value. So the first coordinate is the x, the second is the y value, or your f of x, the function value. Okay, so let's do some practice here together with some of these things with our function notation and domain and range. So the first thing we're going to look at is expressing a set of ordered pairs as a table, graph, mapping, diagram. So a table, we're just going to take all of our x's and put them in one column and all of our y's and put them in a second column. So our x values are 4, 2, 4, and 0. And 4 goes with negative 1, 2 goes with 0, 4 goes with 2, 0 goes with negative 3. So we're lining up our coordinating pairs. Okay, a graph, we're just going to actually plot those points. So four to the right, down one, two to the right, zero, up, four to the right, up two, and zero, down one, two, three. So that would be our graph of that relation. And a mapping diagram, we're going to put all of our inputs in one bubble. So we have 4, 2, and 0. And all of our outputs in another bubble, negative 1, 0, 2, and 3. Uh, make sure that you're not repeating any values. So if you have 4 more than once as an input or 0 more than once as an output, um, don't repeat that. So 4 goes to negative 1. 4 goes to 2, 2 goes to 0, and 0 goes to oops, negative 3. That would be our mapping diagram. Okay, so different ways to um, visualize uh, different relations, coordinate pairs, table, graph, mapping diagram. Now let's look at deciding if something is a function. So remember something is a function um, if and only if it has one um, output for each input. So each input has to have a output that is its only output. So on a graph, we can check this by looking at a particular x value. So any vertical line, well, that's not very vertical, um, tells me at this x value, which is a little more than one, it has this y value and this y value, so this is not a function because it has two outputs for one input. Okay, um, in a set of ordered pairs, we're just looking at our inputs, our x values. If they do any of them repeat, ooh, five does, five goes to eight and five goes to 10, so this is not a function. Okay, given a set of ordered pairs, add an ordered pair that keeps the set a function. So I can add anything as long as my input's not one, two, or three. 
So I could pick any input that's not one, two, or three, and then any output I want. Add an ordered pair that makes the set not a function. Now I have to pick the same input, so either one, two, or three. I'm going to pick two. Could be any of those. And a different output, so seven. I don't know. Anything besides negative one there. Okay, now we have some function notation. So we have this name function, f of x is x squared minus one, and we wanna evaluate f of negative five. So to evaluate, the first thing we're gonna do is plug in negative five, any place we see an x, making sure we put it in parentheses, keep the negative with the five, keep multiplication that we're supposed to have. Then follow your order of operations. Negative five squared is negative five times negative five, that's 25. Then subtraction, right? Multi or exponents are more powerful than subtraction, so we're gonna do that for first. So f of negative five is 24, and we're done there, right? This is not multiplication, this is the name of the function, f, telling us what we put in there. So f of negative five is 24, which means we have the point negative five, 24 in our function. We can also evaluate functions using a table. If I want to find f of one, this means find the y value when x is one. So when x is one, my y value is seven. f of zero, find your function value when your x value is zero, when x is zero, y is negative eight. Find x if f of x is negative 16. So I know my function value, my y value is negative 16. What is my x value? It's three. Find x if f of x is zero. So if my function value is zero, what is my x value? It's two. Given f of six equals eight, identify the input or the independent variable. So we're looking for x, what are we putting in? We're putting in whatever the sky is. We're putting in six and we're getting out eight. All right, let's look at identifying the domain and range. So remember domain, it's our x values, ranges are y, domain is all possible inputs, range is all possible outputs. So we can find domain and range of any relation. Um, so let's look at it from a few different scenarios. Here I have just a list of points. So my domain is also just going to be a list of values, all of the x values. So my domain is just these values. You don't have to write them twice if they appear twice. Usually good practice to write them it's smallest to largest. It's not wrong if you don't because it's just a list. Your range is just all of your possible y values. So we're looking here. Again, if they repeat, you do not have to write them more than once. Also good practice to write them smallest to largest, although it's not wrong if you don't. Okay, so if you have just a distinct set of values using these curly braces and listing the values. If we're on a graph and we're looking at a range of values, right, it's all of these values in between here, um, we are gonna use our inequality notation. So for my domain, I'm looking from left to right. So this is gonna continue going left, right? It's getting steeper, but it's still moving this direction and continue right. So it covers all of the values from left to right. So we could write that from negative infinity is less than x is less than infinity, right? That's what most of our inequality notation is going to look like. Or we can use the double bar r um, for all real numbers. Either is acceptable. Okay, our range here, range we're looking bottom to top. So I'm gonna say at the bottom, well, this keeps going down forever. So I could say negative infinity is less than y is less than or equal to, it goes up to four. Right? My y value right here is four. That's what I'm looking at. Or we could just write that as y is less than or equal to four. Either way is completely acceptable. Okay, see here, let's start with our domain. We're looking left to right. For this left we hit is negative two, is less than x, is less than, farthest to right we hit is three. It can be equal to three because this is a solid circle. It cannot be equal to negative two because this is an open circle, just like on our um, line graphs with inequalities. Okay, range, we're gonna do the same thing, but start at the bottom. 
the smallest one we hit at the bottom is negative 4. We're going from negative 4 is less than y is less than the top one we hit is 1. We can be equal to negative 4, cannot be equal to 1. Okay, remember to put your variable in the middle. Signs always open to the right if we're looking at a range of values there. Is each relation a function? So we're trying to decide if these are functions. So um, from a graph, we're just going to use a vertical line test. Anywhere I draw, ooh, this is kind of interesting right here. I draw the vertical line there. It goes through this point and this point. But since this is an open circle, yes, this is still a function because it has one output for each input. This one's a little weird right at this input. I don't know if that's maybe four. Um, it has that weird spot, but that is completely okay. Let's look at this one. Same thing happening, but this is filled in and this is filled in. There are two outputs for that input. Also here, there are two outputs for that input. So no, this is not a function. It fails the vertical line test. Over here, we're totally fine. I don't know why this open circle would be there, but there's a random open circle there. Um, but it's these two right there that are causing the issue. Okay, that is all we have for review. Thank you for watching.